Okay, I promise to show you something now that I've never talked about before, and that will be in the fourth edition of my free book, Not Selling Anything, Uncovering the Missing Secrets of Magnetism. Okay, right now we're looking at a magnet underneath the ferro cell, invented by my putty, Tim. And here you can see, moving clockwise, brighter lines. These are just fed by standard hardware LEDs. Okay. Now underneath that, moving in a seemingly opposite direction or counterclockwise, you will counterclockwise, you will see dimmer lines. The dimmer lines is the opposite face of the magnet that is furthest away from the surface of the ferro cell. The ferro cell are two perfectly optically flat pieces of glass in between which is a special solution that is less than one micron thin. If you're actually to have this ferro cell in your possession, you would actually see holographic depth far deeper than any hologram, even the best art hologram that the world has ever seen. And this is less than one micron thin. But that's not what I'm talking about here. Let's first take a look at what we're looking at, then understand what we're looking at. Because descriptions are one thing, explanations are another. So, here you see it. Clockwise brighter lines and seemingly counterclockwise dimmer lines. So, what do the dimmer lines represent? Now, we hold a position that is irrefutable, that there is a double vortex on either pole of a magnet. We think that one side is moving clockwise and the other side is moving counterclockwise, but that's a spatial vector. In reality, the truth is, and this is something I've already mentioned, I'll get to the main point here in a second, the truth is that both are moving in exactly the same direction. If you place your hands like this, and move them opposite each other in a way, you'll say, well, they're moving inverse to each other. But if you look at each hand, you'll see that this one's moving counterclockwise, and on the other side, this one's moving counterclockwise. If you move them clockwise, they're also moving inversely. But if you look at each one, this hand's moving clockwise, and the other hand's moving clockwise. So the vector of inverse movement is only a spatial vector. Both are, in reality, moving in the exact same direction. These curve linear circles, okay, we need to understand something else. It is amazing, and this is the most fundamental principle of the universe, and yes, I don't care if it sounds hubristic or boastful, but I'm the first person on Earth to figure out what magnetism is, how magnetism works, and that it can exist no other way. Simplicity is divinity. If you want to talk about Occam's razor, the most simplest explanations must be the true ones. There is nothing possibly conceivable that is more simplex than this. Explaining it, however, is not simple. The explanation is not simple. Really, the main reason it's not simple is because human comprehension of geometers and the notion of uh, geometry and metageometry, space and counter space, the conjugate principles of force and motion, inertia and acceleration are not anything we learned in college, high school, or anywhere else. Don't learn it in college either. You know, I've hung out in university libraries for countless years. You'll not read about this stuff anywhere. Okay, now let's come to a comprehension, and I'll explain something to you, and you'll understand something. And I'm going to show you something for the first time, so bear with me, okay? Something that you'll love, something that's wonderful. Remember that movie, uh, 2010, Space Odyssey? And he asked the mystery old guy, said, what's going to happen? And the old guy says, something wonderful. So... I'll, I'll amaze you here in a second, okay? Let's explain this first. Okay, We know that the brighter lines is the facest, the closest face of the magnet. The dimmer lines that are moving seemingly the opposite direction are actually moving the exact same direction. And these are all curved linear vectors. But the light is shooting in from here, so obviously we have bright lines and we have voids. Bright lines, voids. Either side. We can look at this side or the other side. Okay. What is this? It's not additive and destructive interference like we're talking about in uh, the double slit experiment to the laser, but the principle is still the same. It's a conjugate principle that there's a double vortex on either side of any magnet. And a magnet, of course, has spatial vectors. Polarity is only the definition of the inverse of counter space. So why are there black voids here and then bright lines? Black voids and lines, same thing for either side. 
I think about it a second. It's the same principle that we think of as destructive and constructive interference. Hold on, I'm going to show you something neat in a second. You have to bear with me. You have to build up to understanding the comprehension of this geometry that defines a reciprocating processional hyperboloid that extrapolates itself out as the hypertrochoidal pattern that we see here. This pattern that you see, a spirograph pattern or a hypertrochoid pattern. So why voids, bright line, voids, bright lines? Why? The light is absent here because the vector that is moving where there is no light on either side of this magnet is where the centripetal convergent vortex is coming in. The light is disappearing. You see this black spot right here in the center? This huge black spot that will appear on any magnet, whether it's a spherical magnet, a conical magnet, a donut magnet, a flat magnet, a square magnet, a circular magnet. It all looks the same underneath the ferro cell. Because magnetism is magnetism is magnetism is magnetism, and a magnet is a magnet is a magnet. It has no differentiation as far as the geometry of the magnet, whether it's spherical, conical, cubical, doesn't matter. Because magnetism and inertia, force and motion, inertia and acceleration, are transcendent to the spatial geometry that that magnet is compressed into and formed as. Well, let me show you something else, okay? This black spot right here is where the light has disappeared. It cannot penetrate this spot, nor can it exist here, because this is the point of centripetal convergence, where light is literally sucking down like a drain down a hole, okay? And the places where you do see bright lines, either on this side or the dimmer lines on the other side, that is where the centrifugal divergence, the true magnetism, exists. Where magnetism, literally, the loss of inertia, as defined by force and motion, is being blown out. Centrifugal divergence is where the white lines exist. Centripetal convergence are where the black spots exist. That's not the point that I was building to. Let me show you something. Now I have a magnet underneath here, and I have the ferro cell on top of it. So what happens if you think I were to put a magnet on top of this? What would change? If I put it, let's assume that this is the south pole. Let's assume that I put another magnet, south pole to south pole. Okay, Magnetic repulsion in the crudest sense, which does not really define what's going on. It's a dielectric convergence, or dielectric uh, voidance, or a dielectric countervoidance. So what happens if you think I put south pole against south pole? Would the black spot get bigger because I'm increasing force and motion? It certainly will. You won't be able to see the vantage point, but I'll show it to you, okay? Let me do it off at an angle here so you can see it properly. Hold on, let me get a better grip on ye old magnet. Otherwise, I don't want to slip out of my hands because it's powerful, okay? So... So I bring it closer. You'd actually see and you can't see because I don't have the angle at that spot right now. As I get closer, you can see what's going on here. There's a black spot building right in the center there. Now, if I bring these two magnets together, it will be exactly the same as so far as the field and the pressure mediation is concerned. If I were looking, think about this now. Pause your brain and concentrate your damn brain a second. When I place these two magnets together in what you would crudely call magnetic attraction is increasing inertia and acceleration. So what I'll be looking at here, the ferrule cell will be the dead center of a magnet because when you bring two magnets together and they snap together, what I'll be looking at here in the ferrule cell is the dead center of a magnet. They will be close enough that they will be one magnet. So what do you think will happen? Will it be the inverse of a black spot like we see here, as the light is disappearing down the point of uh, increasing inertia and acceleration? Or will, it be the, will there be a gigantic white disk of light? So at the center of every magnet, there is no magnetism. If you go, we're able to go to the center of the Earth, the point or the center of gravity, if you will, and gravity does not exist. Gravity is not an autonomous field modality. Of course, gravity exists, that which we call gravity. But gravity is absolutely no different than magnetic attraction, what is specifically dielectric voidance. The only difference is the attribution. And in the case of a magnet, it's coherent. In the case of gravity, it's incoherent. So, 
At the center of the point of gravity, like the center of the earth, the center of the sun, there is no gravity. So at the center of the strong field, there is not that field. At the center of every magnet, there is zero magnetism. You can see that underneath the ferro cell. You can see that underneath magnetic viewing film. You could even see it if you were to bring two magnets together with a Gauss meter at the center. So, we know what's going to be at the center. Is it going to be a black spot or a gigantic disk of light? What do you think the answer is? We're creating one magnet out of two. You'll notice as I get it closer, hard to keep it from snapping together, I don't want to break the glass, that at first the black hole gets a little larger. Notice the flux line is diverging. You see that? Now wait, what happens when I bring it together? Look at what's forming before I bring it together. You see that white, that ring of light? As I get closer, let me get it so you can get a better view. As I get closer, the black turns into a ring of light. Let's see if I can zoom in so you can see it. Here we go. Hold on a second. There we go. A ring of light. What you're seeing is the center of the magnet. These two magnets are now effectively one, even though they're separated by a couple of thin pieces of a precision glass. The center where no magnetism exists, there's a halo of light. Oh, that almost sounds spiritual. Yeah, did you go figure that one, huh? So now let's take a look at something else. Let me move the magnets away so I don't destroy my iPad. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, let's turn on the iPad. Now let's take a look at what it is we think we're seeing with the simplex demonstration. Okay. There we go. Let's hit play. Well, there are no straight lines in the universe, so we're talking about a point line divergence. Let's reset that. Find the center. Curve linear. This is the hypertrochoid. Reciprocating precessional hyperboloid. It's as simple as that. This is the pattern of the hypertrochoid. That is the hypertrochoid pattern, what you would call the spirograph pattern. This is a toroid. The center, the same pattern you see underneath the magnet. And the center of that uh, hypertrochoid, the hypertrochoid is only the flat two-dimensional image of the torus, or the donut. And the inverse image, the donut represents magnetism, okay? That is magnetism. So, what sits as the conjugate inverse image to the donut is the hyperboloid that reciprocates. That's the point, the locus of the loss of inertia. Zero point energy, the ether, everything in the universe is electrical. But electrical is a field modality phenomenon. There is something that precedes the electrical. Because electricity of phi times psi equals Q and Planck of electrification. Phi and psi, dielectricity times magnetism equals Q and Planck of electrification. So electricity doesn't come first. I'm just saying that the universe is electrical. Hold on a second. Let me get in focus here. It's hard to focus on this dim stuff. So you are seeing the torus. These bright lines that are going clockwise is the side faces to you, closest to you. The darker lines moving in seemingly the opposite direction are in fact moving in the exact same direction. But the spatial vector of the polarity that defines a magnet is the inverse of counter space, inverse of inertia, inverse of zero point energy. The conjugate principle of the universe is magnetism and dielectricity, the reciprocating precessional hyperboloid. The dark lines represent centripetal convergence. 
the white lines represent centrifugal divergence. So what you're seeing in the white lines is true magnetism. The light is actually hitting it and bending it along the lines of centrifugal divergence. The centripetal convergence, where light is literally going like, a, like water down a drain, is where you see these black voids in between the white lines. Okay? As you can see, these lines that are moving seemingly clockwise are closest to you. They're brighter. The darker lines is the other side of the magnet. Well, they seem to be moving counterclockwise. No, nope, they're moving in the exact same direction, only inverse to your spatial perspective. Space has no attributes. Space is nothing. Space is the air inside this donut. The cream filling inside the donut of magnetic divergence it is literally the farts, the after, the after effect, the remnant remains, the fecal matter of the loss of inertia, which necessitates magnetic divergence and reciprocation. As Faraday called magnetism, he called it the dielectric field. And oddly enough, one of the first experts in electrical engineering was the guy who got closest, even closer than Tesla, to understanding what magnetism was in its relationship to dielectricity, because only dielectricity exists. Only. Magnetism is the loss of that inertia. Electricity is a hybrid of dielectricity and magnetism. That which we call gravity does not exist. Gravity is nothing other than incoherent dielectric acceleration. What you call magnetic attraction and that which is gravity are the exact same damn thing, 100%, sure as shit, right as rain, irrefutable, undeniable, Magnetic attraction and gravity are one and the same thing. The only thing that distinguishes them is coherency. In a magnet, we have coherency. In gravity, we have total incoherency. Enough quantity affects quality. Enough quantity affects quality. There is only one field, and there are three field modalities. Electricity and magnetism and that which we call gravity, they're all the same thing. There is no need for a grand unified field theory. They've always been unified. The only thing that's not unified is con human comprehension of the nature of these field modalities in relationship to one another. And they are all one and the same thing. To think of grand unified field theory is as stupid as a moron, a caveman, a troglodyte, trying to unify water, steam, and ice. We would roll our eyes. Where I'm trying to unify water, steam, and ice. Really? They're all one and the same thing. Well, I haven't unified. Well, they're already unified. It's that simple. Actually, I should have said it's that simplex. It's not simple because human comprehension makes it difficult to explain, making it therefore not simple. But the principle itself, as it stands by itself, all alone, with nobody else trying to figure it out with their caveman brains, it is not simplex. It is only not simplex, because human beings are very stupid. It's not that, this, this, that, that it is that difficult to comprehend. It is that we are that stupid. Oh, we've got computers, iMacs, and iPhones. We're so smart. Really? Do you think so? There's one irreducible fact. It's irrefutable. Every branch of science throughout history has always thought that they were right. They always thought they were so advanced. And a hundred years later, sometimes two hundred, we look back on those people and go, Oh my God, they were so stupid. Timeless, irrefutable, undeniable. That always happens. It always will happen. It's... it's True now as it ever was, it's as true uh, in the future as it ever will be. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, you can drop me a buck or two. Tell me to jump off a cliff. But this is irrefutable. This is real science. Not quantum, not Einstein's brain farts. True field theory, a la Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, Oliver Heaviside. This is cosmic mechanics in reality. 
not the mental brain farts and leprechauns and unicorns of quantum mechanics and their bullcrap particles that have no existence in reality, are not the inputs and outputs of any experiment. Thank you and goodbye.